thank you. And that song resonated with me because I thought about this movement here today. This movement to tell shall know. This movement to say that we are connected to the land, to the water, to the sea. And I'm here to say that I stand in solidarity with our indigenous peoples in the Arctic, with all the Coast Salish tribes that are stewards of the Salish Sea. And like Jill shared earlier, people of color, indigenous people, women of color and mothers are the most impacted by climate chaos. And as Lauren shared, I am here today to read and share a solidarity letter from the Pacific climate warriors who stood and blockaded on Australian shores. connected to this movement as a Chamorro woman. That I stand in solidarity with my indigenous people and people of color most impacted by extraction and global climate chaos. From Alaska to the Pacific, fighting to keep our waters and lands fossil fuel free. As a Chamorita from the island of Guam, Guahan, recently impacted by Typhoon Dolphin. I stand in solidarity to demand climate justice now. <laughs> Against the degradation of our land, our water, and our human rights and people. Guam and our Pacific Islands are also being devastated by big oil companies and systems of colonialism, racism, environmental racism, and capitalism destroying our lands, destroying our coral reefs while displacing our peoples. Yeah. I want to say that our lands are sacred because land is life. Woo! Our waters are sacred because water is life. Yes. And we are sacred, and we deserve justice. With that now, I will share the Pacific Climate Warriors' powerful solidarity letter in support of us shall know activists. Woo! To the shall know activists and community members of the Pacific Northwest, the Pacific Climate Warriors want to send a statement of gratitude and support for your upcoming rallies and actions on May 16th and 18th, opposing Shell's attempts to drill for oil in the Arctic. Last year, 30 of our Pacific climate warriors from 12 different Pacific Island countries paddled our traditional hand-carved canoes into the port of Newcastle in Australia to blockade one of the largest coal shipping terminals in the world. We were supported by hundreds of Australians in kayaks and from thousands of people on land as we declared that we wouldn't allow the fuel industry to destroy our cultures and lands. Shut it down! Shut it down. We are not drowning, we are fighting. We are not drowning, we are fighting. This action marks a turning point for us in realizing that we cannot merely hope that the governments of our small countries will save our communities from the climate crisis. Rather, our focus must be on building large social movements that can work across cultures and differences, creating the political power necessary to challenge the world's largest co corporations. Science tells us that we must keep carbon in the ground and end the age of fossil fuels. But companies, companies like Shell and the relentless pursuit of drilling in the Arctic set us up on a path of catastrophe. Just as our tiny canoes stare down giant coal ships, your kayaks will stare down shells, massive oil drilling rigs, a modern day battle of David versus Goliath. Yes! A battle that together we will win. Yes! Thank you for your hard work in organizing. The climate crisis is a global one, and it demands that we build movements that are global as well. As you are confronting Shell's massive 
Arctic drilling rig in Seattle, just as we confronted massive coal barges in Newcastle, we stand together, together in solidarity so that neither of our communities are destroyed by the reckless drive of the fossil fuel industry. With love and solidarity, the Pacific Climate Warriors. Good morning, everybody. Good morning. We're here to speak out and stop the environmental insanity of drilling for oil in the Arctic. We're here also in solidarity with all workers. Our battle is not with workers who are working at the terminal. Our battle is with the billionaire executives and shareholders of the oil industry. <laughs> who despite all the science that tells us this, this is going to be devastating for the planet can only see as far as their obscene greed for profit. And we wouldn't have to be here. We wouldn't have to be here if our elected leadership stood up for working people and for the environment. Yeah. Let's not give them a free pass. The Obama administration could have stopped this by denying Shell a permit. Board of Seattle commissioners could have decided that they are going to make Terminal 5 a modern cargo terminal and create union living wage jobs in a sustainable manner. Yeah. Mayor Murray could have told us in November he knew the rake was headed to Seattle. So we could have had time to build a movement to stop the rake from arriving here in the first place. Our political leadership has utterly failed us on this globally critical issue. And so we have to be here. It is our moral ob obligation to be here. We have to use today's action and our energy from today to carry on the message of building an escalating series of mass nonviolent civil disobedience until this madness is stopped. Are you all going to be there? Are we all going to say that we stand as one with all workers in Seattle and globally? Yeah. Are we going to demand that the city government and the port act on this? Yeah. Are we going to demand that we defend our working waterfront with union living wage jobs in a way in a way that defends environmental sustainability and takes us many steps towards environmental sanity, not a million steps backward. Thank you all for being here. Thank you to all the organizations to put the effort into making today possible. But remember, for all the naysayers who ask us, what are you going to accomplish by today? Let's remind them that every, every moral victory has been won because ordinary people stepped up and filled the vacuum of leadership that our elite seem completely incapable of providing. We shouldn't stop until we win. Thank you. Hey, hey, ho, ho! Shell's oil rig has got to go! Hey, 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 hey ho, 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 ho! Shell's oil rig has got to go! Hey, 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 h
say no, no, no. Poisoning our soil. Poisoning our soil. Our lives aren't worth their oil. Our lives aren't worth their oil. They have really got to go. They have really got to go. Shall no, shall no. Shall no, shall no. Say no, no, no. Say no, no, no. No, 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 no. No, 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 no. no. Share a song with you. Uh, it's, a, it's a song in our language, and uh, one that I've, I've, I've held so hard, so so close to my heart. Yesterday, the Lutheran Evangelical Lutheran Church in America, in this part of the country, passed a resolution on caring for the earth. I'm here to represent the people that were there yesterday, religious leaders and religious leaders from all faiths in this area, who are committed to caring for the earth and doing what we have to do to stop its destruction. I hope the more. Uh, more of you will be out supporting these demonstrations and representing your faith communities and then carrying back to your faith communities the message that you receive here. We have to stand up and care for our earth now before it's too late. Thank you. Is there anything you'd like to say? Well, for the neighbors for justice and peace are here in the force and we're hoping to make a dent in the they have really got to go. Would you like to say anything? Oh, yes. Okay. I'm mad as hell, and I'm not going to take this anymore. I want you to all get up. Get up out of your chairs. And I want you to all say, I'm mad as hell, and I'm not going to take this anymore. I'm a human being. My life has value. <laughs> um, first time I've done anything like this, but the um, issue is critical, urgent, and important. And if something doesn't change drastically very soon, we won't have a planet that our children and our grandchildren can live on. <laughs>
Well, we're here today to say no to Shell and no to Arctic drilling and no to Seattle helping with Arctic drilling. That's what we're here for all weekend. Um, this rig is here. It's trying to make this its, its place to stop in between drilling for oil in the Arctic. And uh, we don't want it here. We don't want that to happen. Uh, climate change is something that is affecting all of us and is going to affect all of us, our children, our grandchildren, all the species are going to be affected by climate change. And to stop or to reduce the effects of climate change at this point, we need to leave the oil in the ground. So we're here to say no to Shell and uh, Foss and everybody else who's trying to help Shell uh, get their stuff happening in the Arctic. Not only do we not want Seattle complicity, but we don't want this rig to be to be maintained anywhere. These, the the uh, the other one, the Noble Discoverer, just got stopped in Honolulu by the Coast Guard and uh, was found uh, with many safety violations. They couldn't even leave Honolulu to come here. And what what has been estimated is there's a 75 percent chance of a spill up there. And not only is that terrible for the people who have a right to live there, have a right to be cold, have a right to live in that ecosystem, and all the other species that live up there and have a right to live, to live but also it affects the salmon that we eat that are fingerlings up there. It, it affects, you know, Arctic drilling affects everyone. That's just, that's just the drilling part, but then the, when they get it out and burn it, Burning it's, it. you know, 100% chance of damage to life on the planet. And the people that are most impacted are the indigenous people at the poles and at the equator. So we stand with them as well as with all people and beings. Thank you for No to much. extinction. <laughs> I'm sorry. Say that last sentence again. No to extinction. She's a senior at the University of Washington. On the day the polar pioneer arrived in Seattle, the University of Washington agreed to divest from coal. So, uh, you know, right now we have a huge problem with our Congress denying climate change. But really, denying climate change is a white class privilege because we may be able to deny climate change with our AC, not realizing that 2014 was the highest year on record. But those who do not have the privilege of that, those who have to walk to the bus stop, those who are picking fruits in the field cannot deny the hotter temperatures. You know, uh, they may be able to deny climate change as their right policy to destroy our future, but those in the Maldives can tell you about the rising seas because now when the tides come in, their island goes underwater. Those who are in parts of Africa who are dying from the drought that has been constant from the desertification of Sahara, the Sahara Desert expanding in the East and West Africa can tell you that climate change is happening. So denialism, when the impacts are already being imp impacted, um, already being felt, by the most vulnerable on earth is really, you know, a uh, white class privilege that only people in America and Canada and England can do. And unfortunately, it's these countries who are deciding the fate of the rest of the world. But we here today have to hold our, not only our politicians accountable, but our corporations accountable. Because we need to realize that we have, again, a huge privilege to be able to protest. Because people in other countries who are, who are getting their oil stolen, when they try to stand up to this, they get killed. We haven't seen the police attack us yet. So, uh, you know, we, we have to be reminded that we're out here speaking for all those who can't, for all those who tried and been killed. <laughs>
know it's important that we remember them. It's important we, uh, we you know, go on with this because that's the best thing that we can do with our privilege here as Americans, that, you know, we can stand up to these corporations and not have to, uh, you know, face the same sentences and not have to have our existence erased without even the media covering it. Um, so I just want to thank all, uh, all y'all for coming out here. Thank you all for uh, using your privilege for what's right. We the people can do this. We need to rise up. We need to wake up and we need to make these corporations accountable for what they're doing. We need to get them out of politics. They do not belong in politics. They are not people. That money should not influence decision makers. We are here to block, to block the gates so the workers can't get in and they, and we knock back their uh, short window, uh, their window of opportunity to do their work to get up there. They say they have a small window of opportunity to do what they need to do. Where's the window of opportunity to clean up their 70% chance of failure? People, wake up and rise up. We need to to shut these corporations down in their greed. There's only one earth and one love and one unite. Uh, my name is Carl Rossman, a uh, U.S. citizen name. My uh, ancestral name is Anguitak. Anguitak I have come from the Yupik Nation in the Bering Sea, between the Arctic Sea and the Pacific Ocean. Between the Arctic Ocean and the Pacific Ocean. Bering Sea. We're uh, right there between uh, uh, what is uh, called uh, Siberia and Western Alaska, and we share the same culture with the Inuit, you know, circumpolar in the Arctic. Been uh, here with this this whole last week dealing with Shell, Polar Pioneer Rig coming in to support, watching the continued abuse of Shell, violating not only the rights of human beings and assassination of Ken Sarawi in Nigeria, polluting the whole Delta, Nigeria, uh, Nigerian Delta, but, they're violating United States laws, multiple United States laws in the Harbor Act right here in uh, Elliott Bay, the Salish Sea. I'm here to defend the last of the wild salmon left on planet Earth. I'm also here with the elder of the Arctic representative. The representative. With uh, resolutions opposed to shell drilling in the Arctic. And we're here in solidarity with the Duwamish to say no to shell. And I want to give thanks to the peaceful protesters against this uh, very violent company that organizes such violence against not only humanity, but the whole planet Earth. And uh, the guy, that's my name, say uh, thank you, we honor the time with you. Have a good day. I'm Michael Albert, I'm the founder of Earth Citizen Center. And we're here to make a difference. We're here to say, that the drilling in the Arctic is flat out wrong. It is morally wrong. It is wrong because of climate change. It is wrong because of global warming. It is wrong and short-sighted to do. It is time to stand up. It is time to be counted. It is time to make sure that we don't do the wrong things. I have grandchildren that I have to explain my actions to. They need to know that I did my best. And 
Then I'll have to pass it on to them to do their best. This is wrong. All the money that's going into oil production can go into solar production. We don't have to do this. Change our laws, change our society, change our incentives. The incentives of having a carbon tax where people will pay extra for polluting. They're doing damage to the earth and to the air, to the oceans. The oceans are absorbing all this heat that we're putting out. We've got it lucky, we breathe air. But it's the oceans that are absorbing this heat. And when later when they release it, they were in a little bit of trouble. It's time to take action now. Change the system. Thank you. Okay. My name's Ron. Uh, I've spent a lifetime trying to work for social justice trying to make the world a better place for my children and grandchildren and other people's heirs. Uh, this is a different order of reality. We're talking about the health and safety of the planet, of the world, as, which will continue regardless of what we do to it, but maybe not for human beings. So the, this whole reliance on 19th century energy technology has got to change, and it's got to change quickly. Iceland can do it, Germany can do it, France can do it. Even the Chinese who burn huge amounts of coal are rapidly building an infrastructure based on solar power and alternatives. We need to change American technology so that we do not quickly slide into 19th century status, which is what we are doing economically, politically, and socially. Uh, we need to reverse this trend and we need to be counted. So I'm here to participate in whatever way I can. Thank you. Never when you sleep, you can do it in an air-conditioned room. Or driving is your right, so let's get out there and fight. You can read that in the Constitution. I'd go anywhere to fight for oil, to lubricate the red, white, and blue. Here we go now. I'd go anywhere to fight for oil, be it olive, safflower, crew. For cooking, for cars, take a rocket to the stars for a back rub, romantic rendezvous. In your engine, on your face, or almost any place, a little dab of oil will get you through. Oh, I'd go anywhere to fight for oil, to lubricate the red, white, and blue. A song for Rod Coronado, uh, a well-known animal rights activist, and in my opinion, one of the great thieves of our time.